world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Uh, let's talk to Scott Minto, a former West Ham player, see what he makes of it all. Scott, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. You Thanks okay? for, yeah, very well indeed. Thanks for joining us. I mean, even Gary Lineker thinks this was the, the wrong decision, and he and I never agree on anything. Um, but <laughs> suddenly, you know, he's seen sense. I mean, he says it's tone deaf. I think it shows a pretty bad um, sort of PR move, does it? Does it not, from West Ham's perspective? Yeah, let's start with the club first. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I, I was... I don't want to use the word shock, but incredibly surprised to hear that he, Kurt Zuma was actually mm. going to play. I mean, th there's not even really a football argument. I mean, if ever there was a game, if you're talking purely from a football level, let's forget morals or, or whatever, um, and in terms of role models with the kids and, and what the kids saw. From a football point of view, they're playing Watford, who are on their third manager this season, yeah. um, playing at home. And, you know, are under big pressure in terms of going down. If ever there was a game on the day that all this came out to not play one of your best defenders, then this was almost the game to do it. Mm. They were, it, it was a close one. It was a tight one. It was only 1-0. But Kurt Zuma not playing wouldn't have got three points for West Ham. So let, that's the football question out the way. Yes. In, in terms of what the, the owners have done, they've basically passed the buck. And I think that lacks, that shows uh, a real lacking in leadership. You know, even if David Moyes had really wanted to, and obviously he, he had the final say by the sounds of it, they should have turned around and said, look, this is bigger yeah. than three points. This is bigger than... And, and I'm sorry, Mike, even if West Ham had have drawn the game, it doesn't mean to say they're not going to get in the Champions League or that this is the game that didn't get them into the Champions League. Yeah. There's a bigger picture here. So I think David Moyes has done a superb job on the field. I think he's not done anything wrong up to now. A massive error from him. But I actually think it should have been taken out of his hands yeah. by the club. And to hear what Jim's just said now, that they stand by that decision, they just don't get it. No. And this is the problem, right? And it's almost as though they're going to have to use the kind of Sue Gray defence, which is what they're using in Downing Street, uh, about, well, let's wait and see what the RSPCA investigation shows. Well, you don't need an RSPCA investigation. You've got a video of him drop kicking his own cat and slapping it on the head. I mean, you don't need to work out whether or not he's guilty of doing it. He knows he did it. He's already apologised. Yeah, they'll wait for the Sue Gray report and then they'll wait for the Met Police to get involved yeah. and, and kick that can down the road a couple more months. Mm. I mean, look, it, it, it's... There's, there's no defence for it whatsoever. And I really think that not only West Ham scored an own goal here, but they missed a real trick in terms of setting the example to, to what the, the values they have as a club. Um, and, and I'm really surprised that they did that because, as I say, even from a football point of view, I think if ever was a game to, 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 get, to get away with it, even if they didn't think about the moralistic yes. side. You know, in terms of Kurt Zuma, I mean, one, I think he should be prosecuted. Yeah. Two, I think he should be fine. But, you know, to him, he costs £30 million from Chelsea. He's probably on, I think, it's about £100,000, £150,000 a week. And I, I don't begrudge him with that at all. He, he deserves that money. But to fine him for two weeks or even four weeks or even six weeks, yeah. it's not going to it's not gonna harm him in any way. He has to not play. I mean, for me, I, I, I think there are rights and wrongs in life, Mike. And then there are levels of wrongs. Mm. You know, he's not committed murder. So let's not say that he should never have a chance of redemption of, of playing football again. You know, but I think first and foremost off the field, he should never be allowed to have animals. Mm. And, and that should be made sure that never happened. Because who's to say, if he's get angry about the cat messing up his house now, well, he's going to get even angrier, isn't he, about what's happened, what his cat's made yeah. him do. And yeah, I mean, if he's position. a grown man who can't control his temper, although albeit that they seem to be laughing about it, which kind of made it worse in a way. Yeah. Well, it, it shows even more that they don't get it. And unfortunately, there's a, you know, look, we're, we're when, when Izzy, your producer, called me, I was out walking the dogs. I'm, I'm an animal lover. But actually, it's irrelevant whether you're an animal lover or not. It's just what's right and what's clearly extremely wrong. Yeah. As I say, there are levels of wrong. So I'm not saying you should never play in this country again. And, you know, I, I do think there should be a, a ban. Mm. You shouldn't be allowed to play for a period of time. But to actually then turn around and say, well, West Ham should sack him, They've just spent £30 million on him at the start of the season. Yeah. He's on a lot of money. I'm sorry, other clubs will pick him up. So let's be realistic about this. That's not going to happen, and I'm not necessarily advocating that. Mm. But what I do think is they had, a, as I say, scored a real own goal by, by playing on the very day it happened against one of the worst teams in the division. Yeah. Um, but, but still even coming out after that now this morning with that statement, that 
is even more worrying yeah. for me that, that they're back in the decision. Well, that's it. I mean, even as you say, if it wasn't for the moral argument, if they wanted to be smart about this, they should have pulled him from the game last night and you and I wouldn't be having this conversation and the story might well have just disappeared under the radar, as, as these stories tend to do, after a couple of days. You know, Whereas now, they've sort of added fuel to the fire because there are seemingly now two sets of West Ham fans. I've heard some uh, who are talking about how they couldn't watch the game last night, they were ashamed, it's a family club, you know, um, David mm. Moyes himself has said he's an animal lover. Well, I don't know how he can square that with picking the guy no. to play in his team. And then there's the others who say, uh, uh, as, you've, as you've said, he's, he, he's a good football player. Uh, he would always be in the lineup if he was picked on his footballing skills. And therefore, what he does off the field doesn't matter. And I don't get that. No, it does matter. Of course it matters. And, and, you know, look, I played for West Ham. It's an incredibly passionate club with fantastic fans. And to think that where they are right now, the job that David Moyes is doing is, is absolutely incredible. So I understand the, the almost the, the, the pressure from inside to say, oh, we, we, we could do Champions League this year. We've never done Champions mm. League before. But I, I think the majority are still saying, and if you look at it, as I say, what I've already gone with the football front as to why they could have done that and still won the game anyway. Mm. I think the majority of West Ham fans are saying, no, we're, we're a club of, of good, you know, East End people. And obviously there's, there's West Ham fans around the country and around the world, but we have values. And, you know, my, there's two things here. One about the club, uh, and I think they got it wrong, and they still clearly this morning don't get it. Not even a... No, we're actually looking back with hindsight. We made a mistake. We shouldn't do it. Because I don't think it would have gone away. No. But I don't think the spotlight would have been brought on West Ham. The spotlight should never be taken away from Kurt Zuma. And as I say, look, he hasn't committed murder here. He'll always have the shame of going to different places and people looking at him as that's the guy who kicked the cat, chased mm. the cat. Yeah. But also even the role model. I mean, I, I, I'm one, Michael, that I don't necessarily think that footballers should be role models, although I accept that they are. Yeah. I think your parents should be role models. Mm. And the kids inside the house are seeing that and playing up to it because obviously they want daddy to, you know, to, to, to be part of what yeah. daddy's playing as well. It's just absolutely despicable. Mm. And if you do that to the next generation, then the next generation are going to do exactly the same. Yeah. Is there a, a role here for the Premier League, perhaps? Because while you said it might have been a good idea to take it out of David Moyes' hands, maybe it's a good idea to take it out of West Ham's hands so that the Premier League would say he's banned from playing in the Premier League for the rest of the season or something like that. Well, you'd have to look at the rules and regulations on that one. I don't know if the Premier League are allowed to, to get involved. And if they are allowed to get involved, then yes, there certainly should have been phone calls at the very least. And look, are you, are you sure about this? You know what you're doing. Very difficult to comment without actually knowing about whether the Premier League in this particular instance are allowed to get involved. But Mike, I don't think they should have had to have got involved in no. the first place. This no. is something that West Ham as a club should be sorting out themselves and it should come from the hierarchy to even tell David Moyes, look, we know Kurt's a great player, we know he's a great defender, we know he's, we're better side with him in the side. But I'm sorry, you know, this is something that's just a little bit bigger, for the, even if it's just for this particular game. I think that's and, and obviously right. they brought it on themselves. Yeah. Scott, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Good talk. Hot, Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.